When you go through a breakup, it's never easy. It's very difficult. And what you have to understand is that you're not just breaking up with them, you're breaking up with an old version of you. You're breaking up with this person that you thought you were in the relationship. You're breaking up with the past memories that you have with this person. You're breaking up with the future expectations of what you had in the relationship. And in the moment right now, your heart is breaking. You are broken. And the first step that you have to do is accept that. And in today's episode, I'm gonna discuss the two things that you have to keep in mind when you're going through a breakup. And these two things are going to, number one, allow you to get your ex back. Number two, they're gonna allow you to get better through the process of the breakup. And number three, they're gonna solidify a mindset that's a winning mindset, which is what you want, not only in this breakup, but in life. So let's get into it. What is up guys, Sumi here with ThoughtCast. So in today's episode, I'm gonna go through the two things that you have to know when it comes to a breakup. Now, number one, I'm just gonna dive right into it. You're gonna feel sad, you're gonna feel broken, you're gonna feel depressed, you're gonna feel very jealous, angry, upset. You're going to feel a combination of emotions. You're going to feel a flux of emotions. And I want you to understand that this is very normal. This is very healthy. It's healthy for you to feel sad. It's healthy for you to feel like this. You might think, oh, this is unhealthy. I feel like a terrible person. Look, human beings cannot exist just being happy all the time. Most people tell me like, oh, I wanna be happy, I wanna be content. It's not 100% happiness all the time. If you ask me what percentage of the day I'm actually happy or fulfilled or joyous and all this, it's honestly like 10 to 30%, maybe 20% if you average it out. 20% of the time I'm happy and that's really good for me. The rest, I'm anxious, I'm depressed, I'm sad, I'm envious, I'm jealous, I'm angry, I'm all sorts of different emotions. And you know, depending on the day, something might happen where I might be a little bit more angry. Something might happen where I feel a little bit more anxiety. Something might happen where I feel a little bit more happy. It, it, it can be all sorts of different things. But regardless of how I feel, I have to do what I have to do. There are days I wake up that I'm very, very sad and I don't wanna get out of bed, but I have things to do. I have to get up, I have to walk my dog, I have to cook my breakfast, I have to jump on calls, I have to answer my emails, I have things I have to do. I can't sit there and wallow in bed. You know why? Because I have purpose. And I'm gonna get to that in a second, but I can't not do things just because I don't feel like not doing them. People talk about feeling your emotions. That's fine, you can feel them. You can feel them all you want. It doesn't mean that just because you feel them that you have to just give up on everything that you're doing. You don't do what you feel. You do what needs to happen. You do what has to be done. Just because you don't feel like walking your dog, are you gonna let your dog take a crap in the middle of the living room? No, you have to do it. And it's the same thing with everything in life. You have to go to the gym. You have to get your work done. You have to call your family. You have to call people that you work with and your friends and you have to socialize. You have to go out there and put yourself out there. You have to do things that you don't want to do. And especially during the process of a breakup, you're going to want to not do a lot of things because when you get sad, get anxious, when you have anxiety, when you feel depressed, you're typically going to lack the inertia and the momentum to engage in certain actions. So you have to start doing more things. It's funny. You have to learn to be disciplined. The discipline is so important when you're going through a breakup because you're not going to want to do anything. You're not going to want to get up. But right now, more than anything else, you have to get up and stay occupied. So the first thing you have to really focus on is not caring about your emotions. And I know it sounds crazy, but you can feel the emotions once again but you can't care about them. They do not dictate your life. You are not a slave to the way that you feel. You are not a slave to the emotions that are coming in your head because the emotions are naturally gonna be negative, but you have to get to a more positive state. See, think of it the other way. If you're feeling really, really good that you're doing some drug or you're doing some kind of activity, you feel really happy, you've also gotta control yourself there and understand that just because you feel good doesn't mean that you can do it all the time. Just because a drug makes you feel good doesn't mean that you should do it. In fact, just because it feels so good means that you have to stop doing it. And because you feel so sad means you have to do more. So you have to balance yourself in an emotional neutral, really at all times in life, you have to regulate your emotions. When you get too happy and too excited and too all over the place, that's not good. When you get too sad, that's not good. When you're around the middle and you're oscillating a little bit, that's what's healthy. That's actually what's healthy. Now, the second thing that you have to focus on when you're going through a breakup is mindless elevation, mindless elevation. It's about getting better every single day, baby. It's about getting better every single day. And the number one thing that I can tell you about getting better is getting in the gym. Have you worked out today? Have you gotten a lift in today? Have you done some work to make you sweat today? 
your body is going to naturally be down. It's going to be depressed. It's going to be sad. So you need to increase your endorphins and your dopamine levels. And the best way to do that is to work out. I am telling you, working out will change your mood. It will change your life. It'll allow you to feel better. And the things that you need to do will become easier to do because you feel better. And even if you don't do anything for the rest of the day, you've still worked out, you've still looked better, you've still maintained your health. And that is something that's positive that you can walk away with from the day. I'm gonna tell you this too. When you look good after the breakup, when you start to feel better, oh man, they're gonna want you back. They're gonna feel like, man, I, I want this guy back. I, I want him in my life. When you feel better, when you look better, when you're when you're ripped and lean, like as a guy, if you got your six pack going, as a girl, if you got your butt looking bigger and your 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 waist is flat after the breakup, you're looking good. You're taking care of yourself. Guess what happens? They realize that they were the problem. They realize that they messed up. And the process of elevation is so difficult for us because we're so psychologically attached to these negative emotions that prevent us from actually doing things. But on the other side of that adversity, on the other side of that depression, on the other side of that sadness, when you put in the work, is the happiness. It's on the other side. I promise you, go to the gym right now, work out as hard as you can, work out like crazy, break a sweat, push through the workout, don't stop, don't give up half set, don't rationalize that you have to give up right now because you know, you've know you done a little bit of work and it's okay, don't, don't tap out, go through the whole workout, do everything that you said you were going to do and more, and more, and let me know how you feel after. Tell me how you feel after. I guarantee fucking to you, you feel better. I guarantee you, you're gonna feel a lot more mentally clear and you're gonna be like, wow, I don't know what I was thinking. It's your medicine, it's your antidote. You have to move, you have to work. We are hunter-gatherer species that run around, walk around and do things all day. Nowadays, we live in sedentary lifestyles. We are prehistoric animals in medieval infrastructure at best with futuristic technology that can get us to sit down and do absolutely nothing. We are meant to be walking around every single day. We are meant to be lifting things, carrying things, moving around all the time. It's not us today. We are very different today. We are sitting around in front of TVs, in front of computers, on the couch with our cell phones, at dinner tables, when people are bringing us food instead of us going out hunting it. You are not designed this way primitively. You must understand that biology cannot be changed in a few thousand years. It has to be done over millions of years. So you're still that prehistoric animal and you need to get yourself moving at all times. And the way that we subsidize that and the way that we kind of you know, accommodate for this and is getting hard workouts in with a lot of weight, with a lot of pressure, with extended periods of time of just pushing, pushing, pushing. You have got to break yourself when you go in these workouts. You have got to sit there and just go, go, go. You cannot tap out and say, oh, I'm just going to get a light workout in. Why are you trying to get a better life and you're not putting in the work to get that better life? How can it possibly happen? How can you get this person back if you're going to sit here and deteriorate as an individual? You have to put in the work. So first and foremost, I don't care what you feel. You have to do it. You can care what you feel because you feel the feelings, but nobody else is going to care. People might empathize with you, but they're not going to really care. They're not really going to understand how you feel. They haven't been in bed with this person. They haven't kissed this person. They haven't had their forehead rubbed by this person. They haven't spent those memories with this person. They haven't done those things. And you have to understand that they can't do the elevation for you. They can't go knock out a workout for you. They can't. They cannot. You have to do the work. And you know what's messed up? You are the only ones that can do the work. And you're the only ones that can also feel emotions. But these two things, emotional control and mindless elevation, will change your life. They will not only allow you to get your ex back, they will also allow you to improve who you are, your confidence, your mindset. They will make you more successful in business. And they will most likely help you find a higher quality partner that makes more sense for you. So guys, if this was helpful for you, if this made sense to you in any way, please check me out in the description below. All my links are there. And the big thing I want to tell you that makes sense for us here is KD sponsoring our podcast. Shout out to KD for sponsoring our podcast, for allowing us to use this beautiful penthouse and bring you this content. If it wasn't for them, we would not be able to bring you this amazing content. So if you're ever in the Cleveland area, let me know, let them know, and I will get you an apartment of your dreams with a very, very good rate. They have great apartments downtown, all over the downtown Cleveland landscape. And if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to bring you this content recorded today in this peaceful environment. So big shout out to them, guys. And until next time, Sumi out.